Hey everybody, Cigna here with the Bullish Bears. So in this video, we're going to set up the Thinkorswim platform and we're going to trade futures using the Dome. And the reason for this video is we see a lot of people that come in and they're interested about trading futures. They're excited. They want to start getting into it. But the language and the difficulty that comes with trading futures is that it sounds a lot like options contracts when we're really talking about futures contracts. Of course, there are options on futures, except for the micros. The micros are so new that there are no options on those. And they attempt to buy these by coming in and clicking here and clicking buy. And then they see this outrageous value and they say, well, wait, no, no, I, I don't want to trade this. This is this is way too expensive. Right? And, and then they just get very confused about what's going on. <clears throat> so it would be a lot better if I just demonstrate this live so that you kind of get an understanding for what we're trying to do and the way that uh, uh, futures are traded on an intraday basis. And of course, this isn't the only way that you can do it, but it is uh, one of the most popular and common ways to do it. If you've seen any of our other videos, you will already know about the difference in margin, day margin, initial margin, and all of that good stuff. For a short recap, if you click on the drop down and you go to futures, you can see that we have the ability to choose or to look at margin values. So we'll just scroll to the NQ. This has a tick size of 25 cents. Each 25 cent move is $5 and the initial margin is $6,500 per contract. Now, that's the nighttime value, or what they just call the initial value. A day trade value would be one quarter of that size. Uh, you can do that math in your head, or you can just cheat and bring up a calculator. And you can see that we need $4,125 per contract. Now, trust me, I understand that is a very large number, which is why a lot of people use Ninja Trader or Trade of Eight, uh, Infinity Traders or Speed Traders. And any of those would be what we are going to call a small account broker. Most of your big brokers, Thinkorswim, ROJ Futures, uh, IBKR, Tastyworks, any of your big national brand brokers, E-Trade, Fidelity, Schwab, they're all going to have this initial margin value. The government tells them that they need to have uh, this calculated government formula to determine what your risk would be per contract, and then they use that to calculate these margin values. But if you're going to day trade, it would be what was on that calculator, one quarter of the size. Now, those micro brokers, they have a different government formula. And when we're not in this extreme volatility that we've had since the virus got here, a micro is $50 per contract and a mini is $500 per contract. So obviously a drastic change, right? It's a lot smaller. So... How do we trade this, right? Well, first we want to set up the dome a little bit. We use the drop down here. We go in here and we get rid of some of the things that we don't want. For me, I don't need buy market. I don't need sell market. Don't need reverse or flatten. The only thing I need, well, I do need flatten, not cancel. So I'll bring flatten back and we'll get rid of cancel because I don't need cancel. All right, so that's the first line. Then I also want auto send up there and for me I want quantity with buttons I also want the editor well can't have that but we can have the selector all right so now you can see I've adjusted the template just a little bit we can easily choose how many contracts we want all right that's kind of like our hotkey button to just easily identify our contracts and then we can build complex baskets that way, when we push a button, it immediately places a stop for us or 
puts on a one cancels other or triggers a basket, all kinds of different things. And Lucian has done a video on creating uh, a complex order that will fit your trading, right? And you can find that on the Bullish Bears YouTube pages. But we're going to just let that go at the moment. We'll just stay with a single. The next thing we want to do is go over here, show actions menu, customize. What I don't need to see is how many I've done today. So I'm going to get rid of that. We'll close that up. And now we've got this. We go back in there again and we hit customize. Nope, that's the wrong area. We want this gear right here. And we want to make sure it says show studies from chart. And the reason we want that is if we have moving averages or something else on our chart, we will see it appear here in the dome. Now we want to give ourselves a little bit of room. I like to see the volume very clearly. And then I want to be able to see the orders. And I don't need a lot of room for the numbers in here. All right? Usually it's going to be double digits at the most, right? 40s, 30s, 20s. It won't be, you know, 100s, 200s, 300s. That would be triple digits. It'd be more like double digits like this 10 down here. So I don't need too much room, just enough. Now you're going to find that as you get to playing with these boxes, it's kind of hard to get them to, to size up the way you want them. And you can kind of struggle with that and, and mess around. So we're looking at 8,800. I'm going to go ahead and throw on an order down here at 8,800. And we'll hit send. What I need to do is turn on that auto send so that if I come and put on another order, you'll see that it didn't ask me uh, whether I wanted to or not. Now, it says I exceeded my margin limit. So um, this account, this is a paper account, and I keep it limited to how much money is on it. That way, when I'm trading on this paper account, it kind of simulates my real account, right? I don't want to just be playing with like Bill Gates money, right? Because I know I don't trade that way. I don't have that kind of money in my life. So trying to get six contracts, it denied me. It said I was going to exceed my values. Uh, but now I no longer need to ask or get the double message about, do, am I sure I want this? And uh, now I just click the button and it immediately shows up. Now the button that I'm clicking is the left mouse button. And I can do that on either side. All right, I can got to stop now here. So suppose that the market just dropped really quick and I got filled, but it continued to fall. Well, this would protect me. It would get me back out and I would only lose this one point right here. Now, I don't want to lose. Right? I'm not interested in losing, but I don't want to lose my account if we get this big waterfall like we had right here. Right? It happened very quickly. And if you blinked or maybe you was reaching for something to drink or you was talking to your wife and the next thing you know, the market drops like a rock, it moves 25 points in the blink of an eye and all of a sudden you're really hurting in your account, right? So even though you're not in a trade, you still want to have that stop in place to protect yourself. Now this stop, we could just call it something silly, right? Like a disaster stop. It's not there for me to to determine I'm willing to risk one point. Instead, it's more there to perhaps uh, just protect me from getting uh, beat up, right? So you can see that I got caught here in that whiplash. I'm gonna go ahead and put my order back on to go long. And what I'm looking for here is if the market starts to rally back up, then I'll just jump on, right? It'll fill me on a way through and I'll go ahead and take my entry into the long side. Now, I'm not trying to demonstrate in here my ability to trade profitably or uh, to impress you with my skills as a trader. I'm live streaming in the middle of the night, and my main goal is to help you understand how to use this dome and to recognize that we're trading futures contracts. And the price per contract, it's not this value that you see, all right? Eight seven nine eight. That that would be a very expensive thing to buy, and you know, for those of us with small accounts, we we just wouldn't be able to participate in that kind of marketplace, right? But that's not what we're doing at all. We're using a margin of that, just a small piece of it. All right. So I did get filled there. I want to change my order, my quantity limit, so that when I do click a button down here, it's one contract at a time. I did get filled with three, right? 
And now one thing that I still want to do is put that disaster stop on because I don't want the market to just crash and burn with me in the account, right? So two point stop is typically what I use. Uh, we got wicked out in that one point. The, the NASDAQ's a very wicky little bugger. It does not surprise me at all that I got wicked out at that one point. It's what I get for talking while trying to trade. So here we are, we're just demonstrating how this is working, right? This is your way to begin paper trading, whatever strategy, style, setup that you want to trade, right? You can see, for an example, we've got this really nice bear flag here. And this bear flag is giving every indication that it's going to continue to move down, okay? For this to start to look like a failed bear flag, we would want to see some indications of perhaps uh, another low so that we would see a basing pattern start to form. And we're not really getting that. Instead, we're getting this very clean, very sharp channel here like this. And so it's presenting uh, just an almost picture perfect bear flag right there. So we've got our stop in place. We're long in the market. And you can see that that loss that I had taken is gone now, right? We've, we've covered that. And now we want to put some stops in place to make sure that we don't get uh, some heat, that the market doesn't come back and run into us. So you can see I got filled there. I'm only long two now. I cannot lose in this trade right now. There is nothing that I could do that could cause me to lose. Right, because my stop is above where I got in. 8100, or excuse me, 8801 is where I got filled. You can see that up here, but you can also see how it's highlighting on the dome. And I got my stop above where I got filled. So if price was to come down and stop me out, I could not lose money here. It might not be as profitable as if I had got filled up there, but I couldn't lose money, right? So there you can see I'm out of the trade and I not only made back the money that I lost when I got wicked out, I'm actually up, up on the day $55, All right? So this is how we day trade or even trade at night. This is how we trade futures. It's certainly not the only way. And Thinkorswim gives you so many choices, right? It's got the big buttons if you want to use those. And it has the trade buttons if you want to use those. There's so many ways to do this. You could even just go up and click right there and click buy, right? So, you know, the dome is certainly not the only way to go. Me, personally, I really like it. It's very comfortable for me to be able to just click there. Maybe I want to adjust it. I just grab it and move it down. There's no problems at all. I can see my order on the chart. And while we're here talking about orders, we can go into settings and we can say, show me my trades. So now, here on the chart, you could see where I actually have already had a trade. That way I can journal my work. I can keep track of what's going on, right? And this allows me to uh, take a good look at what I'm doing and try to determine if it's a uh, viable strategy, right? If it's something that I really want to continue to do or maybe it needs some work before I go live. I've had a lot of people tell me that they don't think that there's any value in trading in paper and I, I really disagree with that. If you can't trade your strategy successfully on paper, then you know you have no business going live with it. It's a very easy way to, to ask the question is, should I be going live in my trade right now? Is this a good strategy? Does it work? Now, of course, just because you can trade it on paper, it does not mean you can actually be successful with it in, in real life. But if you never did it on paper, it's guaranteed to not work in real life, right? Because you have to be able to demonstrate your abilities, even if it's only to yourself. Okay, so there's a lot of value in trading in paper, but in the end, you will have to go live, which is one of the nice things about trading the micro products. When you are risking $10 in a trade, it might be upsetting to lose, but that $10 isn't going to blow up your account, right? 
And that's kind of what the whole idea here is. We need to get experience as traders, and we need to do it in a way that's safe enough that we can't blow up our account. Of course, this doesn't account for you. You're the most dangerous thing to your entire trading account, not the marketplace. Because if you don't have rules, or if you don't have self-control or discipline, then you're going to overtrade, and you're going to trade when you're angry or upset or excited, and you're going to make mistakes because of emotions and fear and greed instead of trading your strategy. All right? So if you trade on the micros, you can learn all about yourself. What do you have a problem with? Do you have a problem staying in the trade? Do you have a problem pulling the trigger to get into the trade? Maybe your problem is identifying the bigger picture or finding your trade setup. You'll learn all about yourself and about your strategy if you actually put it into work. Right? So now you've seen futures traded in a live market in real conditions and they are no longer something that is unfamiliar to you 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 now have the opportunity to go in and set up the same thing to bring in your active trader the dome here and to go to work and start putting on trades and uh take your trading to the next level right so hey that's all i got i appreciate your time i look forward to seeing you at the next video